Hello. Today's notes are on density. Please remember that you can pause or rewind the video at any point so that you have more time to write or draw whatever you need uh, in order to understand the notes as best as possible. So what is density? Density is how much mass something has in a certain volume. Here we have two cubes that are equal in size and yet one weighs 100 kilograms and the other weighs 200 kilograms. Which block has more matter in it? Well if they're the same size and one weighs more then we can assume that the bigger one, the heavier one rather, has more matter in it. How can have one have more matter if they're the same size? The blue block must have a higher density more mass in a certain volume. Let me see if I can explain it to you with some pictures. Here we have a yellow block and a blue block. Which block has a higher density? The yellow one. But how would you know? What thought process did you go through to determine the yellow one was right? Hopefully you looked at how many little circles are crammed into that yellow block versus how many circles are crammed into the blue one. You can see there are a lot more circles. Now those circles represent atoms, uh, atoms of matter that are stuck within that certain volume of space. Because it has more matter contained in the same volume as the blue block, the yellow matter is more densely packed and so you would say that object is a has denser a higher density in this case we have two yellow blocks and the question is which has a higher density well the top block is definitely bigger than the small block and if I count up the actual little circles there I would find that the top block has more circles again those are representing atoms in whatever that block happens to be made of but as far as density goes, they're actually the same. If the same type of matter, uh, it has the same density because the matter is equally crowded. The size of the block doesn't actually make a difference. Density is simply how tightly packed those molecules are. How many pieces of matter are within a given size. Here we look again. We have a really big block, this green one, with even, you know, nicely spaced out pieces of matter. And then we have a purple block that's much smaller with very tightly packed pieces of matter. So which one is more dense? The pink block is smaller, but it has a higher density because the matter is more crowded. You can use density to predict if an object will float or sink. Will this yellow object float or sink, do you think? Well, look at how closely packed the molecules are in the yellow piece of matter versus the liquid, which we made blue here for water, and how pa closely packed those molecules are. In this case, if something is more dense than the fluid, it will sink. Let's do this again. This time we're going to use this brown block, and you can see how closely the matter is packed into the brown block versus the water. If something is less dense, like it is in this brown block, than the fluid that it happens to be in, then it will float. Now it wouldn't matter if that brown block was a small block or the size of a aircraft carrier. If it's less dense than the fluid it's in, it will float. Here we have uh, two different things. We have a duck on the left, and we have a an anchor that's being dropped out of this boat on the right. The duck is less dense than the water, so it floats. I mean, it, it's also getting help by paddling its little feet, but even when it doesn't, it's still going to float. And the anchor here is much denser than the water, so it sinks. So how can a balloon float just by filling it with hot air? Again, the answer is density. Here we have some people who are filling up uh, a balloon, a hot air balloon, with uh, hot air, 
You can see the fire there heating the air up. And here's the basic um, the basic layout of a hot air balloon. We've got what's called the envelope, which is what we think of as the balloon, and the skirt. We have a parachute valve cord, and this valve here stretches all the way up to the top to release a little a little hole in the top of the balloon. Um, we've got our burners to continually heat the air, and then we have a basket and we usually have some propane tanks that go and, and do the burners. So what happens? Uh, when any fluid, or in this case, a, a gas, gets hot, its density changes. So when you heat up a molecule, the, the pieces, the atoms in that molecule are actually get excited and they start moving more quickly. So if we can make those molecules of air on the inside of the balloon move more quickly, then they are naturally going to spread out farther and farther away from each other. If they're farther away from each other, then they are less dense. And just like with the uh, boat on the water, that if it's less dense it will float, the same thing is true for air. The less dense we get the air, the more it will float. So in this case we have the outside air, is one temperature and they're moving somewhat slowly so they're not very far apart versus the air that we've heated up on the inside of the balloon which is moving very quickly bouncing off each other pushing itself away from each other and therefore making it uh, less dense and lighter how can you figure out the density of an object you, you need to measure two things you need to measure the mass which how much it weighs, and the volume, so how much space is it taking up. The formula, formula for calculating density is uh, mass divided by volume. Sometimes they just say D equals M over V. And we can also actually use what's called the DMV triangle. It's, it, I think it's easy to remember because DMV, we think of that from the cars, you go to the DMV. Um, but we call this the DMV. And basically all you do is you cover up whichever one you're looking for on the triangle, and the triangle will tell you what kind of math to do it. So this line here across the DMV triangle represents division. And this line here that goes uh, vertically on the triangle represents multiplication. So if I were to give you a, a math problem and I asked you to find me the density of an object, I would simply cover the D up and what would I be left with? I'd be left with mass divided by volume. So mass divided by volume. If I wanted to find out the mass of an object, I'd cover up the M and I would be left with V times D. So volume times density will give me the mass. It works the other way too. If I want to know the volume of an object, we can take the mass divided by density and it will give us the volume. So this little DMV triangle is a way for us to remember do we multiply or divide in order to uh, be able to solve equations having to do with density, mass, and volume. Um, let's go over and remember how to measure mass. We've just been doing it over the last couple days, but let's take a little um, refresher course. Remember, mass is, mass is the measurement of the amount of matter that something has. So on Earth, we think of that as weight. But remember, mass isn't necessarily weight because if we took um, something that weighed 100 pounds on Earth and we brought that up to the moon, the moon's gravity is one sixth less, or is one sixth of the Earth's. And so it would weigh only one sixth, something around uh, 17 pounds on the moon. But the amount of mass, the actual amount of matter in the thing, wouldn't change. So mass and weight are not identical, but often on because we all live on Earth, we think of it the same way. Um, remember, the scientific unit for mass, the metric unit for mass, is the gram. And you can um, abbreviate that with a G, a lowercase g. And we measure mass with a balance. And 
We just did this. We went over how to measure with a triple beam balance. If you are not comfortable with the triple beam balance, please see me so that we can go over it again to make sure you can do this by yourself every single time correctly. Because it's going to be super important throughout the entire course for you to be able to measure with the balance to get mat the mass of a, of a object. Um, now, remember on volume, we have two different ways to measure volume that we just went over. Um, and volume, again, is the amount of space that something takes up. We can measure volume for both liquids and solids. Uh, for liquids, it's very simple. Again, the unit is the liter, which is uh, abbreviated with the L. And we're going to use a graduated cylinder. Remember, the key, key thing to remember when we're we're measuring with a graduated cylinder is for you to, to determine how much each one of those little lines on the graduated cylinder is worth because it's going to be worth different on a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder versus a thousand milliliter graduated cylinder. So please make sure you you look at that before you write down what your answer is. Also remember we're also we're going to be measuring the meniscus of the water which is that lowest point the bottom of the water. Now, if we have a regular solid, so a rectangle, a square, a cube, um, then we are going to use our rulers and we are going to measure with uh, the centimeter side of the ruler every single time. And we're going to measure the length, the width, and the height. Um, last time we actually called it uh, height, width, and depth. Um, so it actually doesn't matter which one we call as long as we make the measurement of all three and multiply them together we'll get the volume and the units for volume in this case are centimeters cubed all right centimeters cubed and it actually is equivalent to uh, liters so you can actually use them back and forth but if you measure it with the uh, with the ruler I want you to use centimeters cubed now what happens if you have a solid, but it's not a regular solid, it's not a cube, it's not a rectangle. We need to then go ahead and use what's called the displacement method. And we're going to use a graduated cylinder. We are going to record our volume of liquid in the graduated cylinder. And then we will drop our object. Here's our, our little mini hammer. Uh, in this case, we had started with 65 milliliters. We drop our hammer in and then we record again what our displacement of the water is. In this case, we went up to 69 milliliters. So the question would be, what would be the volume of the hammer? And all you have to do is subtract and we end up getting 4 milliliters or again, 4 centimeters cubed. Because it's a solid, it's preferable to use the centimeter cube, please. So calculating density is really simple. We use our DMV triangle. Uh, we measure the mass. We measure the volume. We divide and we get our density. And again, mass is grams and volume is centimeters cubed. Or if it's liquid, we do milliliters or liters. And generally we say per. So we'd say uh, 27 grams per 14 centimeters cubed. And that just means that that is the density for that particular material and it doesn't matter if we have a little of the material or a lot of the material the density stays the same regardless i hope you were able to follow along and uh with our our with all of the math that we did in this uh, this presentation we will definitely be doing some sample problems in class and uh thank you very much for watching i'll see you in class